Hello everybody and welcome to Holy Manticore Games. Alright guys, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to take those bases that I just primed and I'm going to uh, create some cool little Necron Warrior things. Uh, just getting my paintbrush washer primed up, uh, getting my wet palette situated, uh, and getting some supplies. So I got my three-piece set of Army Painter brushes that I really like. Just getting those um, rehydrated just so that way they can uh, work optimally. But all in all, just getting all my stuff situated. Um, At this point, I'm just kind of looking at all the things that I have going on, checking out my paints. I uh, decided that I'm going to go just a very simple red, blue, a yellow, white, um, and orange. Just in case I wanted to uh, start mixing my own colors and eventually end up doing just that. At this point, I realized that I should probably get some of those pipettes. I think those are probably going to be a really good investment um, as these videos continue, uh, especially when I do my small projects uh, where I'm not like pouring a significant of paint out. And as you can see in the back, I tend to use uh, quite a bit of orange. Uh, I use it to highlight a lot of my Necrons and my other stuff, so um, it's always got a home on my uh, wet palette. One of the great things about the wet palette is you don't have to worry about working time on any of your stuff because uh, the paint doesn't dry out and it still works wonders when you're mixing paints and blending colors and things of that nature um, so if you don't have one uh, and you're thinking about getting serious with um, painting i highly suggest picking up a wet palette so on this two-tiered um, base uh, that i made in the last video i decided that i was going to create a little bit of a water scene so right now i'm just doing the dark blue water and then I mixed some light blue <clears throat> and I'll be uh, doing some like water splashes and stuff like that uh, with the white here in a little bit. So I switched over from the larger army painter brush to the medium army painter brush just so I could get a little bit of stippling um, with the tip of the brush and uh, get a little bit lighter um, point on there so it wouldn't like over consume the rest of the blue uh, Well, the blue paint's drying, I'm over here painting this base red. I decided that I was gonna do like a little lava thing um, and uh, get a little bit creative, see how my lava creation works. This is only the second or third time I've done a lava base. I've watched a couple of tutorials and I figured uh, why not give it a shot. Um, so 
we're kind of working with the uh, wet paint um, and then just adding paint on top of it so it, it automatically starts blending together. And I figured go from red to orange to yellow so that way it's not like super contrast or my yellow just automatically turns orange. Um, so just trying to figure that out as well since it is really one of the first times that I've painted lava. Just trying to blend up some colors just so that way it's uh, not such a shock in between like the red and the orange and the orange and the yellow. It seemed like to be a very uh, big difference in colors and it didn't really look like lava so I wanted to make sure that um, I was able to kind of blend things together a little bit and so I was just uh, making the orange a little brighter and then the yellow a little orangier and kind of used about five different variations of color in there just to make sure that everything wasn't like too standout-ish. Here I am mixing up some brown because uh, I wanted it to be like a, a ground like dirt color top. Um, on top of like a water splash so almost like a jettison or something that like pokes out over the water Again, as I'm working through these projects, I really didn't have a plan in place for anything. I had some ideas from while I was shooting the basing video, but other than that, like I'm just kind of going with the flow, trying to figure out what I wanted things to look like, what I don't want things to look like, and, and just experimenting. Um, but I only uh, end up making three. Um, I was uh, running a little late and had some other things to take care of, so I didn't want to overcommit and spend too much more time on another base. So I'll probably do another short video of another creation with the leftover base. But here uh, I just made some green so that way I could have like a grassy scenery type thing so I uh, at this point I was like yeah I really want to do um, some flocking um, and get some of my other like grass tufts and flocking and, and stuff that I've acquired over the last little bit um, and try to use them and just make a little video and, and showcase what's going on uh, right now I'm just uh, doing some uh, touch-ups with the yellow and the orange on the lava base that I'm trying to do. And then I'm going to put like a brown uh, rim around the edge as like just a border. Uh, again, just kind of free flow creating just to see what things look like. And um, so far I'm just experimenting and enjoying myself and that's really uh, what a lot of this hobby is for me anyways is just 
having an outlet of creativity um, that goes along with playing a really cool game. Um, so hopefully you guys like um, these kinds of creative videos because this is something that I really enjoy doing and plan on making a couple of other ones with some stuff that I've uh, been messing around with. But um, yeah, just experimenting with paints and brushes and uh, trying out the new equipment that I bought. So. And then making sure the brushes aren't too wet and then just kind of showing how I did the blue, dark blue, light blue and white and then the green color that I made and this lava. I wasn't really a big fan of it, but I knew I was going to do some other stuff. Um, speaking of other stuff, I got this really cool UV resin. Um, it's a gel and so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a resin layer over my uh, lava and a resin layer over the blue water on those two bases and get those um, looking more liquidy, I guess. Um, the little light and the resin I got from Timu and um, the light cures the resin in about four minutes. So uh, I didn't have a way to edit the <laughs> um, part out uh, to where I was uh, curing it. So um, on the first one, uh, please bear with me uh, as we just kind of go along with this fast forward setting. Um, but as I start editing my videos, uh, and get used to this program on my phone um, and on my computer. I hope that things uh, continue to improve. Uh, any suggestions or comments, um, if you have a good photo or video editing program, I would love to hear about it, uh, especially if it's free because this is just a hobby. Um, but. I, I just really enjoy it and I'm glad that I get this opportunity to share it with people. So, um, yeah, it's not a terribly bad process, um, especially since I paid like four bucks, I think, for two bottles of resin and this little flashlight, a UV flashlight. Um, it cures clear, crystal clear. Um, I've messed around with it a couple of times. Over on the right hand side, you can see another lava base. That was really the first time that I did it. Um, it has a coffee grounds and paint crackle layer on top with the grass tuft. Um, I'll probably do a tutorial on how I created that uh, because I did watch a, another YouTuber um, talk about you know how they can make different texture based paints and stuff like that out of household things um and i watched his video uh, i tried it his way i didn't really care for the way it came out um but they are the reason that i was able to make that and i really like the way that came out so like i said i'll probably do a video on that uh just to explain my version of it uh, because I really enjoyed the look and the texture of it once it was dried. All right, so the four minutes is up and just checking it. And as you can see, it creates a real nice clear coat. And now I'm hunting some other paint, uh, looking for a black paint uh, so I can do the edge of the base and kind of go over um, the edges to where it looks like um, the lava has crusted uh, on the edge 
and then it has a little bit of a brown layer underneath that and then it flows into the molten lava so just getting ready to do that and at this point i realized that the concept that i have is that i want a necron warrior kind of like falling into the lava so i'm going to be putting in um, some black over the lava in general, like into the middle of it, like the black film on molten metal uh, when you put new metal in it and it has like that uh, soot or um, the impurities settle on the top. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of base it and give some detail uh, because of the idea that I had for later. After I had done the first layer of the black paint, I realized that this brush was uh, probably at the end of its life and I'll not be using it to paint after this video. Uh, it's probably going to become a glue brush or something, uh, but um, I don't like getting rid of things too much because um, everything can serve a purpose uh, one way or another. That's kind of me. Uh, repurposing a lot of the stuff that's going to be in this video but yeah if you have brushes that go bad definitely um, if you've got the space keep them because you never know you may use it for a uh, texture base you may use it for glue um, so I always like to hang on to things for a little by a little while before uh, before getting rid of it And I know I didn't do a very good job of keeping my hand out of the way. Um, it's just uh, definitely a learning curve of video project, uh, video uh, production. Um, but I'm trying to get another camera um, so that way I can uh, position it a little bit better so that way it's not off on the side because a lot of times I'm using my phone on like a tripod and I gotta position it to where everything is in the um, in the picture so I got smart here uh, and I kind of pause the video and then unpause the video so that way uh, that four minutes turned into about 30 seconds and here you can see it's just a small layer of the resin so that way it looks like water again. Um, I really enjoy the resin uh, and uh, it, it surprisingly enough dries clear and it looks like water or it looks like lava. Um, I do wanna try mixing some um, acrylic ink into it uh, and see if I can turn it into like a lime green or like a fluorescent color so that way I can do like toxic waste uh, with the resin itself but again uh, maybe a concept for another video right at this point I'm just kind of getting my super glue situated uh, because it's uh, I have to like punch into it and getting some flocking material uh, ready to go and uh, my tufts and everything else. So I got all of this um, flocking and the tufts and the flowers and everything else all off the of Timu. Um, I'll put a link to all of these products as well as a link to, um, if you don't have Timu, you can download it and use a code that I have that it's like an affiliate code um, and it helps me uh, earn a little bit of money on Timu. I just started this program 
so I can continue to buy this stuff and they can kind of not sponsor me, but um, I get credit from other people downloading the app that haven't downloaded it yet. So I can pick up maybe something that I wouldn't normally pick up just to try it out because, you know, I have some Timu money in my account. So, like I said, that'll be in the uh, description below. So please check that out if you don't have Timu. Uh, download it with the link and use my affiliate code. If you do have Timu, definitely check out all these products that I'll be linking in the video because you can't beat it when you pay a dollar fifty or two dollars for thirty flower bushes or 60 tufts of grass or four bucks for a UV flashlight and two ounces of UV resin. Um, I just, I don't know. I really enjoy the hobby, but I also really enjoy uh, not spending a ton of money on uh, being super creative. Um, and honestly, uh, this isn't the first video that I've used a majority of these supplies and um, the flocking that I got from army painters or army builders and uh, all of this, it, it's pretty much the same. Um, the flocking that I made from rope, the, the stuff that I bought from the hobby shop and this Timu stuff, it, they're all the same. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if the company that makes it and sells it on Timu is the same company that makes and sells stuff uh, where you would buy like stuff from like Michael's or Joann's or a uh, local game store. Uh, so uh, it's cheap enough to gamble with, uh, but so far I really enjoy it. What I don't enjoy is these multi-use bottles of um, super glue they are a total pain and this is the last project because i finally ran out of super glue uh, in this bottle by the end of this uh, video so i'm going to start using my tiny tiny little one-off um, bottles of super glue so that way it um, i don't have to worry about like repunching it over and over and over again because I have built quite a few things with that bottle of super glue because I don't want to get rid of it because it's still good super glue. It's just a pain to have to drive a needle or a nail or a thumbtack or whatever into it just to get some more super glue. Just cleaning the brush off because this is my glue brush um, and just kind of dusting off some of the excess flocking and making sure like scraping off the edges and making sure all that looks good just so that way I don't have to worry about it later. And now for my Necrons that I kind of set off. I got these Necrons in a pack of stuff that one of my friends gave me when I first started playing and they're all uh, super old Necrons that are on teeny tiny like 25 millimeter bases and I didn't have any other bases and now that I've got these I figured why not throw them onto some creative bases and check it out. like my friend uh, super glued one foot and not the other on pretty much all of these in this video. One is like super hard to cut off and one just basically falls right apart. Um, just checking like how I think I want it to set, clean off some of that old stuff and here we go. I'm just gonna put a little bit of super glue um, on the feet and then um, get it positioned onto the um, onto the base.
So I was putting a bunch of pressure onto the legs, trying to get both the feet to super glue to the base. Uh, and as soon as I took my finger off, uh, it popped that right foot off. And I'm here struggling, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with my life. But uh, ultimately I decide to just let the right foot go free. So it looks like he's trying to like step over the flowers. And I think it's a pretty cool thing. Um, definitely not intentional, but uh, ultimately it gives it a little bit of um, realism. Like, I thought it looked pretty cool. Just touching up some of the paint because I did notice that the super glue had gotten some places that I didn't want it to and it like kind of like frosted over the paint so just uh, touching up oh yeah also um, in doing the voiceover I'm using my wireless um, microphone kit that I got um, so let me know what you think about the quality of the audio on this video versus other videos because this is the first video that I'm using the microphone um, to record my voice and um, it seemed to work good in the tests but um, you never know uh, how other people perceive the way that you sound. So if you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know. For this one, I'm thinking to myself, like, I am so tired of this super glue. So I'm just gonna drop some on the paper and then dip the feet in there and just mash it into the grass. So it looks like he's literally standing in tall grass. And I really like the way that the feet look in the grass. Um, and the position kind of like he's walking up to this uh, deeper grass, like, hold on, let's see what's going on here. And now for the ultimate in uh, reutilization, I'll probably use this as like a reanimation token or re for the reanimation protocol when I'm playing uh, my Necrons, just, uh, as a cool little uh, flavor thing um, but here I am getting the bottom half of a broken Necron and uh, found a set of arms and a gun um, a gauss uh, flare uh, that I'm gonna use to create my uh, Necron warrior falling into into the lava um, so again I bust out the resin and um, I'm going to cure it into place, uh, just checking it out, making sure that the paint was dry and it wasn't like loose or going to chip off. Um, so I gave it a quick scrub with the toothbrush just to make sure nothing was going to flake off the top because that was the first time that I painted on top of the resin. Um, and here, just getting a little quick pre-cure on the resin so that way it's sticky and here we go it's definitely such a small amount that I didn't 
uh, want to wait the two minutes or four minutes, I mean, uh, to cure everything. Um, so it was kind of uh, rushing the system just a little bit on this part because the parts that I was curing were so small. Um, and it ended up um, curing relatively quick. Um, so if you use this, uh, if you end up buying it and using it, it's definitely um, in small amounts. It cures, you know, 30 to 60 seconds. But I did notice that if you're trying to cure like the whole entire base, it does take that three to four minutes as recommended on the bottle. And here I'm just kind of making sure everything's in place and making sure everything looks good. Uh, that it's all going to be held together when it cures. Uh, I wanted the liquid to be like rolling up the arms a little bit. And so I added a couple more drips to where like the arms go into the lava. Just so that way it creates like a more 3D representation of the Necron being like sucked into the lava. Now I'm just being cautious and um, making sure everything is cured in place so that way once I start like moving things around and painting and retouching and stuff like that it, uh, it doesn't accidentally fall off or start being weird so after the fact I think I probably could have spent less time curing this this step but Definitely spend the full four minutes curing if you're doing the whole base. So one, two, three, and that didn't transition very well. Um, again, still learning, but uh, please uh, <laughs> bear with me uh, while I uh, do some... Thanks for watching, and as always, leave a comment, subscribe, like, and share.